I'm Cecily Lopez, I'm 22 years old, and I'm from Philadelphia, PA. I'm a mixed up cocktail. My father, where Lopez comes from, he has uh, Portuguese descent, and my mom, she is with Dominican descent. I didn't think I could be a model when I first started. I was just like, let's see what they say. The worst they can say is no type of thing. And um, I guess once I realized that it's my career and how to twerk it from being a hobby into something that's gonna last a while, that's when I fell in love with it because I knew what I was doing and wanted to do more. While I was in Florida, I went to um, a model convention and I must have been 12 at the time, begged my mom and Everyone, all the agencies said no, I was too young, so I was devastated. So then we went up to New York, like a few weeks or maybe a year later or so, when I got a little older, and um, went to all the old proceeds, and um, that's how I got discovered. I would do amazing jobs, and you know, I had a great management, great agency, but it wasn't constant, so it would be like, you know, one campaign, and then maybe six months later, I'll do an editorial, and then maybe another campaign, and then maybe a year later, a great editorial. So it was always like on the radar, off the radar, on the radar, off the radar. So it was during my transition when um, IMG had dropped me. It had dropped me when I was 18, because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do as a model, because, you know, it was a hobby for me. And um, that was like the biggest motivation for me. I was just like, what? You can't tell me no. <laughs> So when I was under my management with Major, we um, did some really amazing things and that's when I realized my strength as an actual model. Because when I was with Major, it was kind of like a fashion movie, everything moved so fast, but I was just kind of in tunnel vision, I didn't see what was happening, I didn't let anything affect me, I was just going to work every day. So from working with Mizell to being on the catwalks for Dolce & Gabbana, from living in Paris for six months. It was really hard. It was before the black issues, so you know, I was hitting the pavement every day, not making money, and just struggling as an aspiring model in France, just wanting to go home, but I can't, because I have to work, so. But it was fine, like after five months, that final six months was, six months was when all the work really came in, and I was really happy. I'm, I'm human, just like everyone else, and I don't think clients really realize how young we are. And, um, you, and once again, it's not personal, it's business, so if you don't fit the look for the collection, it could really hurt your feelings if that's a designer you've been walking for for a long time. Or there, when people are like, oh, models are dumb, they're just you know beautiful little mannequins, not working, living this glamorous life. It's like, okay, well, you know, in order to do this, we have to leave school, we have to get homeschooled, so for you to call us dumb, no. We're, we're young, we're trying to do as much as we can in this world, just like everyone else. We just do fashion for a living, or it's fashion is our, modeling is a summer job for some of us, you know what I mean, so. But me personally, I can only speak for myself, I definitely had that phase where I was a party girl, where a lot of people don't really know about, but um, I, I had to get out my system, you know, coming to New York, moving to New York at 14, and moving out on 16 on my own, you know. And that's, then again, that was why I wasn't so consistent as a model at that age, because I was just, you know, I'm partying because I don't have to work in the morning. You know what I mean? But for the working model, you, you can only go out for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, show your face, and then go home because you have that six o'clock call time. Yeah. You have to combine both worlds, but you have to get what you need out of it and not let it take you and make you into this, you know, little party monster. <laughs> Runway and editorial, it, it's weird. I have a love-hate relationship with Runway. I love being on the runway. I love being, be seeing the process of clothes being made. But the process of Runway, which a lot of people don't know about, is, is just a, it's really tough. It's hard to swallow. And, and just about every girl in this industry could vouch for me on that. Right? For editorials, you know, you guys only see that one picture that's in the magazine, or you just see the whole story, but the whole process is, is really amazing. Like, I love going to work and asking questions. I feel like a lot of people or the clients don't expect the model to want to know what we're doing. But I ask questions. I'm like, what's the concept? What are we doing? What made you? Why, why me? You know what I mean? So while I'm being made up or my, while my hair is getting done, I can already picture what I'm supposed to do, or what they want from me. And then when they have the clothes and the full look, it's just no stopping me. Um, it's definitely over with time, I've learned. And 
for me, it's all about music. <laughs> And it's nice when you have a client that's like, all right, what's your playlist? And I'm like, oh, I have a photo shoot playlist. And it ranges from rock and roll to country to what's hot right now to super sad, depressing songs just to pull out different emotions from me so I can just go and give you whatever em emotion and expression that you may need. So you may have a thousands, of, thousands of shot in one look, but totally different in each frame. You know what I mean? So that's how I do it. I like to just listen to music and just let go. Or photographers, for sure, hands down, Stephen Mizell. I would, I would not be anywhere near close to where I am today if it wasn't for Stephen. And I always thank him whenever I possibly can because he definitely made me who I am today. And there's Testino, who's always super fun to work with. Uh, Inez and Benude, I love Inez. They, they are the most dynamic team, and you definitely feel their love just as, you know, <laughs> being together. Uh, the Marshallier is always a dream to work with because he's always super, super fast. And um, Mariano um, Vivanco is really cool, too. He's one of my favorites and a friend. Uh, for designers, the one man who will probably stay in my heart until the day I die is Jean-Paul Gaultier. He's just such a dream. Like, He's so legendary in his, in his name and with his fashion house. He's just so lovely to be around and to just sit down and pick his brain during a fitting. Is, you learn something new every single time you see him. And he's extremely loyal and I, I, just, I just love him. I just love him, love him, love him. And, and there's like, you know, the Christian Seriano and Laquan Smith and Mark Jacobs. Those guys are really cool too. Well, um, I guess Stephen and Franco decided they wanted to dedicate an issue to women of color in this industry and I was fortunate enough to be not only on the cover but inside the magazine and I was totally ecstatic, you know. I wasn't really working that much or doing things of that caliber at the time. I was I was just so happy to be a part of it from shows to campaigns to interviews, people wanted to know who I am and why I'm on the cover. So it definitely helped in a whole world of its own. It, it's insane. It's a mix between aerobics to cardio, from Pilates to kickboxing. In my apartment I have a gym, so I go down and run whenever I feel like it. <laughs> I, I like to call myself a chef, so um, I cook a lot of comfort foods, which probably isn't so good for my career, but it's really good for my palate. <laughs> and um, so that kind of adds on pounds, but also with the working out, it kind of cancels it out. Mm. Anything seafood, any type of seafood. Yeah, my boyfriend and I have been on like a fish binge, so we've been learning how to make different styles of different types of fish. So, yeah, seafood. And, but more so like Latin based food, like lots of rice. So for hair, I kind of do kind of just depend on my hairstylist. His name is Dante Bradshaw. He is phenomenal. As far as I know, what he uses in my hair, he's like an Aveda addict. <laughs> so he uses a lot of the beta products on my, on my hair. I've recently gotten to Burt Bees. I love their whole skin line for the face. So they have a very nice, um, a nice, like, I think it's like an apricot scrub that I use, and then I use one of their cleansers. But when I'm feeling pretty domestic, I make <laughs> my own mask, which consists of um, like a whole avocado and some chopped up apricots and some honey. And, um, just smother it on and let it get hard and wash it off with a lupa and that radiates your skin. And uh, also we do like a tablespoon of honey and olive oil and you take it, it kind of moisturizes your skin from the inside out so it gets you a nice glow. Getting all dressed up, doing my hair in a nice special way that I'll make those something a bit more jazzy. But for like every day, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like a t-shirt some sneakers, not sneakers, yeah, I like some boots, like, you know, some Doc Martens and like a cool little v-neck or a nice graphic tee or a nice big, like, cable knit sweater and some leggings and, you know, a cute little shoe. But, um, yeah, I try to look polished at all times. I'm definitely more of a shoe girl versus handbags. Um, I think I may have about, I don't know, maybe like 60 pairs of shoes or so, I guess, and sandals. But, um... Yeah, I, I do more shoes than than bags. I <laughs> my shoes. Okay, well, shoes are from um, Fendi. I'm definitely a Fendi girl, mm -hmm. definitely. And, um, you know, my rings, I got this actually for Christmas for my sister. It's from Henry Bindo. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just a nice little ring I have. And these bracelets I got in Botswana last week, along with the necklace. And, yeah. 
most fashionable city besides New York, I would have to say would be London. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And um, so just to go, just for whatever purposes, would definitely be Phuket, Thailand. Could definitely stay out there for quite some time. <laughs> I like to read. Yeah, I like to get a nice book, and I like to get lost in my own world and books. And I, lo I love to cook, so I do a lot of cooking on my downtime and um, sleeping. Lots of lots of sleeping and shopping, of course. You know, like any other girl. So I'm actually um, a smile ambassador for Operation Smile. And um, Operation Smile, if you don't know, they're an organization that goes to uh, you know, a world of different third world countries mainly, but they go to a lot of different places and um, show the doctors there how to fix a cleft palate or a cleft lip. So um, it's definitely a beautiful thing to be a part of. There's a lot of great things coming up. You know, um, I'll be in the magazines that you guys usually see me in and um, making money, you know, yeah. So yeah, just shooting, shooting my butt off, and you'll see me on the catwalks coming this, what, September, or maybe yeah. even for Couture. So. Yeah. For the future, we'll see, you know, who knows what the future um, holds. I've been taking a few acting lessons, um, so maybe you'll see me on the big screen, but um, honestly, my heart and soul is really into cooking, so I may come out wow. with something. Maybe I'll have a cooking show, maybe I'll have a cookbook, you never know. Hi, it's Cecily Lopez, and you're watching Model Behavior on Style Blazer TV.